Kathy by Design. Welcome to Throwback Thursday. This is a little series that I do where I dig back into my stash of older papers and create something new and fresh with it. Today we're working with Photoplay's Love and Cherish. This is a collection that came out a little over a year ago and it's a wedding anniversary uh, collection and I'm using it today to make an anniversary card for our friends Neil and Ruth who are about to celebrate their 50th wedding anniversary. So I thought this was a great collection for them. They're casual, you know, really laid back people. So the vibe of this collection is great. I'll just show you the collection first before I start hacking it up. I love this little pickup truck. This is the one that actually caught my eye and I'm pretty sure this is going to be featured. Um, but this is just a great, I love that it's primarily black and white. There are a few pops of green and gray because that means it goes with whatever color scheme is being used. These quad sheets are fantastic and I'll show you a fun way to use those. Um, just really great subtle prints, a little bit of romance, <clears throat> a touch of botanical. So uh, really liking this collection and anxious to dig into it. So these are the 12 by 12 papers. So cute, I love these little lights, so darling. And then here's the sticker sheet, great border pieces, words, um, a repeat of the images, of course, from the paper collection. And then I also have the pickup truck die and Mr. and Mrs. in this little banner and heart that matches up to this cardstock uh, paper with the truck and stuff. So I will definitely be using this. And then I have the ephemera pack. So I'm going to go ahead and put some stuff together and come back. And then we're going to build something fabulous together. So I want to start away. with building a card folio base. I have an idea in my head. I think uh, 50 years together deserves more than just a standard little card. So I've cut two pieces of eight and a half by 11 card stock into six and a half by 11 inch pieces. And I'm just going to start by running a bead of adhesive down the side and you can use quarter inch score tape if that's what you prefer. I'm just gonna use my uh, Dries Clear Glitter Glue. And we're just gonna overlap these. This is how I start pretty much every folio. This is 110 pound card stock. I wanna say this is from Michaels. I wanna say this is, um, every once in a while you can find 110 pound at Michael's and um, it's their own recollections brand. And this glue will dry and that messy seam right there will be covered up. Now, I apologize for my voice. It is pollen season in North Carolina and I'm trying to be healthy and walk, which means I have to go outside, which I'm not sure how healthy that is because of what it does to me. But anyway, that's what that's all about. All right, so I'm gonna score this at six and a half. I'm going to score in a half inch spine, so I'm gonna to go to seven. I'm gonna flip this and score it on both sides because sometimes with really heavy paper, you need to score both sides of it so that it doesn't crack and it will do better if you do that. All right, then I'm gonna fold it on this seven inch line. I'm going to come in and score it again. I'm trying to make sure I'm straight here. I'm gonna score it again at six and a half. This of course will be the back cover. Then I'm gonna go another half inch to seven. And then I've got this little, let me turn this and I don't wanna get ahead of myself. Oops. All right. So we're gonna fold this. So now we've got this piece that is between seven and eight inches long. So I'm gonna go five and a half. And then this will turn and be a pocket. So there it is. Now you know how to make the base. Very, very easy, right? So we'll take scraps, and I apologize, it's also spring, North Carolina, everybody's mowing, everybody's trimming hedges. So you're gonna hear some background noise today, but there's nothing I can do about that. So just ignore it the best you can. I'm gonna mark that with my pencil. Bring it 
bring this in. All right, so we want to go two and a quarter. And I want to go one inch. And these are going to be our little gussets for the pocket. And why gussets? A lot of you have heard me explain this before, but when you adhere the sides of a pocket directly to the paper, you lose at least a quarter of an inch and maybe more underneath that. By using a gusset, you, you get the full width of that pocket, which when you want to stick things in pockets like I do, it's a very, you know, it's a good thing to be able to do that. So, folded these gussets in half. I'm going to put adhesive on one half inch side. The folded side goes against the edge of the paper, just like that. And then we're just going to do the same thing on the other side. If you've never done this before, this is a great way to make a pocket. And then put adhesive here and adhesive here. Now, why did I choose this teal? I'm glad you asked that. Uh, turquoise and pink are Ruth's favorite colors. And I made their 50th anniversary invitations for them and included turquoise and pink. So I'm just carrying out the theme. I know that's her favorite, so that's why I'm doing that. All right, so there's our little folio. Easy, right? You can do that. Okay, let me line this. I'm gonna come down. Um, these panels are six and three quarters by, uh, I mean, six and a half by six and a half, so I'm probably gonna go six and three eighths by six and three eighths, and we'll need one, two, three, four of those. And then this panel is, okay, so this panel is five and three eighths, so I'm probably gonna go just under five and a quarter by six and three eighths here, and then same thing in here, and then this little pocket on the side here is gonna be two, just about two and an eighth, by the six and three eighths. So let me line this and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got it all lined. I've added these little three eighths inch by six and three eighths inch uh, pieces in on the spines. And I wanna show you, I pieced it here. You cannot even tell. This is a short piece because it's inside the pocket. So that saves you a little paper. And I pieced it on the back. So that way I was able to maximize the use of my cardstock. Now I also wanna show you this little thing. I don't know if the camera will pick this up, but can you see how this paper kind of frayed when um, like cracked? And sometimes no matter how hard you try, paper will do that. Well, this is a neat little trick that I've learned. You take your Art Institute Dries Clear Glue and you just put a tiny little bit on there and then you rub it with your finger and look at that, it disappears. Isn't that a neat trick? Because that is something that really plagues me if I have you know, carefully scored and all this stuff and I get those little cracks. So you can just come in with your dries clear and you just lightly rub your finger over it and it seals it and you don't have the problem anymore, it goes away. So I thought that was pretty neat. The other thing is right here, you can see I didn't make my piecing cut exactly perfect so it's off by just a hair. I take my thumbnail against the part that's hanging over and I just push it and it goes away. So those are sneaky little tricks that you might find helpful. All right, the next thing we want to do is find the front of the album. Yes. Here we go. <laughs> How did I do this? Uh, oh, I know what we've got here. This is what we got going on. All right, so we're gonna find the front of the album and label it as front, so that doesn't happen again. So this is the front, all right? And that will keep me from getting into that confusing little dance that you just saw me do there. Now we're ready to add um, let me see. I think I want to do 
the ribbon closure next. So let me get that put together. So I looked at my stash and I found this great wedding ribbon. I am not sure where this came from. It might have been on the Really Reasonable Ribbon website at one point. I might have bought it from somewhere else. Um, but I'm just going to show you very quickly how I do this. I measure out. I love that it says happily ever after. That's really good. I measure this out. And cut it. And always with ribbon and tying bows. Cut longer than you think you will need it. Because if you cut too long, you can trim it. But if you cut too short, there's not a thing in the world you can do about it. So always overestimate rather than underestimate. That's just a really good basic tip. I'm going to bring in 3 8 inch score tape. I'm going to move my ribbon. I want to run this right down the middle. Well, actually, I'm a little high. That's okay. The main thing is straight. And just to there. And then I'm just going to use a stamping block to tear that off straight. And then always with score tape, you want to burnish because that is what gives it its hold. Okay. Now come in and find the middle point of your ribbon. All right. Remove the front half of your tape. Find the middle of your spine. And the reason I'm doing this under is that the paper will help keep it in place. It makes for a stronger closure rather than going on top of my designer paper. And I just wanted to go with something very neutral. I didn't want anything too. I mean, these colors are bright. So I thought this ribbon was a very good choice. All right, so now see, you've got your tails and you can just tie and you're good to go. Let's start putting this cutie pie together. On the cover, I use these white roses. This is cut to six and an eighth by six and an eighth. And we're just gonna put that for now, then we'll come back and finish. On the inside, I want this to be a pocket page. So I had a piece of our white roses that is short. We're gonna glue that down. This is also six and an eighth, six and an eighth inches, but it's a little short because paper is 12 by 12. So if you cut something six and one eighth, you're going to have a short piece on the other side. But no worries, this is gonna go down on the top. And then we're gonna bring in our wood grain paper. I've left the branding strip on the bottom. And this is just over seven by three and a half. And the reason I went just over seven is that we're six and one eighth. So you add an inch for your pocket. So I'm gonna line this up on an even mark and I'm gonna score, oops, she says. Yeah, let me get that in there just right. I'm gonna score this. Well, I don't like that one, hold on. Let's go right here. That one has three eighth inch marks on it, so it's kind of confusing. So let's go a half and then turn it and go a half. So we scored along the branding strip on the bottom and then we went a half inch on either side. And we're just gonna bring our scissors in and snip out the corners. And throw this part away. Fold that branding strip back. Fold the sides in. 
check it for fit. And we're a little short. So what I can do, well, it's so little, I'm not even going to worry about it. And we're just going to, I mean, it's like a 32nd of an inch, which really, in the overall scheme of life, is nothing to stress over. So we're going to line this up. Burnish this down. And there's a pocket. And we can decorate that up with something in a little bit. Now we come over here to our flap page. And this is cut two inches by six and an eighth. So six and an eighth is going to be the height on everything. So I'm bringing this wood grain in here. Line our pocket face, just like that. And then inside the pocket, the width here is four and a quarter, and of course the height is six and one eighth. All of that, so we're just gonna line that up. That's gonna go right here. Then flip this open. We've got our center panel, and I've cut a sixth and an eighth inch square of this pretty green botanical here. Then I cut this four by six out of the paper pad. We're going to score a half inch along the top. And now we can glue this down, just like this. All right, and that brings us over here. And I want this page to be a lateral waterfall. So I've cut a five and one eighth by six and one eighth of this botanical. And then these are six by six by six. These are all six by six. So we're just going to score a half inch, and this will be a nice little place for them to put photos from their 50th wedding anniversary. We're just going to burnish these. So I'm going to take this first flap and I'm going to actually adhere it behind the page like this. And before I glue that page in, I want to just see how much I can do here. So this next one will go here. It looks like we can maybe get three, but that's a good number. get these all straight so they line up okay. so it looks like we can do two so let's take one of these that wouldn't work Cut. Let's cut this wide. Let's be bold. Let's go three inches. That might be too bold. Let me see. Actually, I kind of like this plan. So let's score this six. Let's go ahead and score it at three.
right. And now let's glue this down. Some of you have said, oh, I would love to craft with you. Well, this is what it's like when you craft with me. Things just kind of happen. I don't, I don't have a plan usually. I have a vision, but not a plan. And when I get a good idea, I go for it. And sometimes, and all truth, my good ideas turn out to be bad ideas. But that's half the fun, right? Um, okay, I'm going to bring in this punch. And again, it would have been easier if I'd done this before the fact, but hey. All right, so let's do here. And let's do here, okay. I actually really like that. That's very sweet. Now... Bring in some magnets. Some of you have asked me, these are basic gray, small magnetic clips. That is what they are called. I'm gonna put one right here. I get mine at joanne.com. I wait for them to go on sale because they are pricey, but they're very strong and they're very thin and I really like using them. Okay, not that one. All right. And I'll figure out something to cover that up with. But now we have a little magnetic closure there. which is Because really I want nice. there to be lots and lots of photos um, for Neil and Ruth. I want us to take our 12 by 12 quad sheet. I love these guys. This you're going to want to do over and over again. This is very, very cool. So what I've done is I've cut a slit from the left-hand side to this center point between the top and the bottom. Now I'm gonna come in, I'm trying to line this up straight, and I wanna score, we wanna score right down the center, and then turn it, and score to here, all right? Fold the top down. Fold, hold on, I'm gonna do it like this. Fold the top down, fold this flap to the back, and fold this flap to the front. Now you've made this lovely little folio. See, and you've got one, two, three, four pages in it. What we're going to do before we go any further because our pocket is only six and an eight. We're gonna bring this down and we're gonna trim it down to five and a half. I'm sorry, that's five and three quarters. Struggling today, five and three quarters by five and three quarters, all right? Now come in with your adhesive, and you can use whatever you like. Between this page and this page, you've got room to add a little pocket page. Oops. So put a thin bead of your adhesive down there. just right along the bottom, and I'm going very thin, and I'm going very close to the bottom. You could make that be a gusset if you wanted to, but um, on these, I don't feel like it matters as much. Look how pretty that is, y'all. And this will fit in this pocket, just like that. 
Isn't that neat? So there's a whole little album that they can put a whole bunch of pictures in. And I'll probably, um, so what you do to cover up this hole on the side is come in, let me cut this. So see those little pieces we messed up on are gonna be used after all. This is two inches wide. And we wanna go five and three quarters. I'm just going to lay this on here. I'm just going to score along this edge, sort of like this. Bring in my scoring tool. Okay, so there's where I scored. And I just want to do this. Make sure I'm straight. And then go over an eighth of an inch. All right, and that eighth of an inch is going to make it that it um, turns, you know, it takes that corner well. So now, Bring this in, make sure I've got it oriented the right direction. That's always important. So this is the right way because here's our pocket on the bottom. Yes, here's our side pocket, see? Or it could actually go this way. I don't know which way I like it better. I kind of think, I kind of think I like this better. That looks more right side up to me. All right, it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to line this up. And I'm just going to put adhesive here. I'm not going in too close to that little spine area. And then I'm flipping it over and I'm doing the same thing on the back. So now we've got this really adorable little mini folio. And you can put a photo mat in here, which is beautiful. So you can see what I mean about how that glue, you saw how thin that bead of glue was that I put down? Even that thin little bead of glue has spread out and taken up almost a half an inch. So you might want to on yours, just go ahead and do a gusset. Um, you'll get the full height of your paper that way and I'll decorate this up with some little elements and show those to you but look now this fits in this pocket what a sweet little folio I am loving this guys this is precious and so easy to make you can whack out a bunch of these and you can change it up use it for birth special birthdays use it for you could do this for a baby you know whatever so lots and lots of fun there. All right, I'm going to do some figuring out and I'll be All right, back. let's take a look inside. I've got it all finished. I kept this very, very simple because I really do want it to be all about the photographs. But this is a little four by four. I just took one of the images and put it over here to make a little tiny photo folio. Then here's the cover of our larger folio. And again, you can't do anything too super embellished on the front of this because it has to go in that pocket. And then I just cut a couple of photo mats, a pink one and a teal one to go in the side pocket. So that is that. Then over here, I just dressed up our little pocket face. This is kind of a cool thing. This has these three tags. I left them connected together and just cut, you know, the middle and then accordion folded. And then on the back, there's room to do journaling. So that's kind of fun. Another little tag where they can do journaling and another little tag for journaling. So these live in this side pocket. I love tags and pockets. So then this flips open. Here's our little flip page. The only thing I did was I added a little photo mat up here. And the only thing I did over here was I added a sticker over our magnet here. I put these stickers, Mr. and Mrs. on the front. 
And then I added this piece of the rose paper to cover up the magnet, but everything else is exactly like it was. Again, I want room in here for photos. So that is the inside. Now we're gonna work on the outside. Hold on. All right. So on the outside, I cut a five by five square of this bouquet paper and then matted it on teal and pink. And make sure I'm right side up here before I glue this down. I'm just gonna glue this down on the cover. And you can see I ran out of teal paper, so I just pieced it on the back. That's a sneaky little trick. And I want this kind of over-centered sort of with the right and the bottom, like that. Then I took this little three by four, matted it, and we're gonna do the same thing with this. Right here. Then because I had this beautiful Rene Bouquet's printed beautiful board with these pretty pink florals, I decided to make a shaker element. So I just cut my clear cardstock, glued it down to the back, and added my three layers of foam. And now I'm going to bring in some pretty pink and turquoise shaker elements. And I'm going to put these right in the center. I'm trying to keep these from going all over the place. And I like the pinks because they actually have a little gold in them, a little gold bead, which is beautiful. You want to make sure that you don't have sequins or beads around the edges because they get in there and they make a gap and then you're window leaks. All right. All right. So I'm ready to commit. I'm going to just press that down. Okay, that's pretty. Okay. I could have put a little bit less in it. Almost covered up the words. If I didn't think it would lead to disaster, I would lift it and take a few out. Nah, it's really stuck down there. But some of these will get stuck to the sides. So already you can see it's... So I just roll it around there. There we go. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. All right. So, Hold so I've on. got these beautiful Prima flowers from my suite. And I'm just going to start arranging these. While you listen to some pretty music.
now I want to create a little dangle element for my spine and I've take a piece, taken a piece of my ribbon, this pretty pink, and I've wrapped it around the spine. I'm just going to come up here and tie a square knot. Oops, this is hard to do on camera because I'm trying to make it that you can see. There's our square knot. And I put together a little dangle with this pretty filigree heart and this teal tassel that I had in my stash. I wanna take a silver jump ring. And I might need more than one. I'm going to take the first one. I'm going to come up above the knot. And I'm going to take this jump ring. Detach it through these two pieces. Like that. I'm going to cut this metallic string off. I don't think I need it there. All right. I'm just going to tie a little soft bow. Oh, that's sweet. And then just trim the ribbon tails. They don't need to be that long, but I wasn't sure how much I was going to need. All right, guys, that finishes that up. I'll probably make that bow a little smaller. Tie our closure here. I'm excited to give this to them on their anniversary. I think they're gonna be really surprised. So there you go. And you can adapt this, you know, any theme. This is a great basic folio base. So have fun with it. That's it for me, Kathy Clement, Kathy by Design, Throwback Thursday. Go get your craft on. Bye.